Hello and welcome back to Do News. I'm your host, the King of Do. Taking a quick look at the markets before we dive into the news. Capitalization right now is at 98 billion. Uh, we got back up above 100 quite well, actually. Uh, I saw 103 and even uh, 106, I believe, at one point. Um, but we have trailed back down rather quickly and actually quite a bit just in the last few minutes, in about two hours. Um, and I'll go ahead and show you that. Looks like the Asian markets woke up uh, and they did not like what they saw. They are getting out right now. And um, as you guys can see, if you're right now, we're at the six hour. So we're looking at the six hour candles. And uh, you can kind of see here that the highs are getting lower. So just something to keep an eye on. Um, and the lows are getting lower. Is there potential this one dips all the way down and is another new low? Something to be looking out for. If it dips down and matches the previous, maybe we've hit the bottom and that would be a good sign. We could actually bounce extremely hard um, off of that uh, potentially. Um, but if all is well with the world and this is a, cr a change in direction, a change upward again, um, it uh, will fall somewhere in between here, but you can see the sell-off happening here. And this is Bitcoin versus USD right now, okay? So taking a look at the markets, it's a day of blood. Uh, lots of red. Some huge winners, though. Uh, we've got Ant shares climbing all the way up to number 12 now. Uh, making some big strides. Long ways to go to get to number 10, um, but it's within reach for Ant shares. And uh, Zcash taking the step back the last few days, uh, which is which is probably healthy. It had a long, nice green run going for it. Uh, Genosis up 30%, and um, that's pretty much the big gainers that I can see. Ant shares and Genosis, the big ones. Um, other than that, the entire markets are down right now. So um, that's your update. Let's jump right into the news. Uh, Viacoin here um, basically has announced a successful testing and quality assurance period for its coin. And uh, they've added SegWit. So that's what they are testing. And it looks like they'll be rolling that out soon. So um, they're hoping to do it in the next few days. This is good news um, as uh, another proof of SegWit working and uh, being successfully rolled out. Um, that should give some people confidence in uh, Bitcoin. Uh, basically adopting SegWit. So that's definitely something that uh, you want to keep your eyes and ears peeled about. Any news around SegWit right now um, is critical. Uh, a failure of SegWit or a setback of SegWit is, uh, would be alarming and uh, maybe something that uh, pushes the markets down. But all that being said, um, we actually had a nice little run up in the markets and a lot of people believe it's because of the World Economic Forum. Um, this white paper was released uh, essentially covering blockchain technology and uh, gained a lot of press and uh, good vibes essentially. Uh, all the wonderful things that we know to be true about cryptocurrency and blockchain technology, all of those good things are highlighted in this white paper and um, was taken was taken uh, very well by the general public, and uh, looks like that a lot. I've seen some reports essentially saying that this is what you know um, helped the market recover a little bit after the large sell-off earlier this week. So we'll see how long that lasts and if it's able to maintain. So we'll keep watching those markets, and I'll keep on bringing you the news on how the markets are reacting. Moving on. Um, Dash all over the place in the news right now. Um, surprisingly, their price is not responding well to this news. It came out two days ago on the official roadmap, and I'm not going to cover it too in depth because you can go read it yourself. And some of it is a little more technical, but I'm going to give you some bullet points, some highlights from it. Um, essentially, they're moving the entire team over to the, uh, the uh, Evolution project. Um, that everyone's working on over there. And um, we still don't have a lot of clarity on what evolution is. Um, some people say it's just, you know, a, a code word for evolving, for Dash evolving. 
I'll give you my hypothesis. This is my hypothesis on what Dash is doing. Uh, evolution, um, well, if I, if it were me, and I, uh, it would be a great name for something that is going to be a tool that helps things evolve. Uh, my prediction is that they're working on some type of system that will allow you to evolve any type of cryptocurrency. Any. Um, instantly and seamlessly through Dash. So that all the cryptocurrencies you own, your net, your net worth gets rounded up essentially into a single balance, which is your Dash, and you transfer it. If they were to do that, the mass adoption of the Dash app um, is very Im it's imminent. It's going to happen. There's not one person I know in this space that wouldn't download that. Um, because if I could start sending and receiving every cryptocurrency I own, if I could evolve it instantly and seamlessly, doesn't matter what coins I have, essentially. Um, if I could do that on an app to anyone anywhere... Uh, it's going to get adopted extremely quick. Well, then you can start expecting to see uh, dash point of sales and things like that because um, that's just that's just what's going to happen. Anyhow, that's my prediction though. So don't get that confused with actual news. But that's my prediction of what evolution is or it will become someday. Um, they've hired more devs to accelerate the project. So. Uh, it's kind of funny because in this white paper they say we're gonna be really careful and not rush to market and we want to make a good product etc then they immediately say essentially that we're accelerating everything by hiring more people so um, it's interesting they're trying to go fast but also go slow and uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of corporate mumbo jumbo um, to try to just sound nice and sound pretty but um i have no doubts that the the movement of the team and the hiring of more people is a knee-jerk reaction in my opinion to the opportunity to dominate bitcoin august 1st may not go off without a hitch it, it could be devastating leaving the door wide open for someone or something and um, Dash is positioned right now to take that lead if something were to happen. So, I know uh, I have a lot of Bitcoin fans and Ethereum fans out there. Um, but we've got to be realistic, realistic about the application of Dash and what it's achieved already. It can't be ignored what it's achieved already and what they're continuing to achieve. I'm not saying you have to like it. I'm not saying you have to love it. Um, but I do think it's worth taking a moment, pausing, and taking a closer look at um, and understanding where they have an opportunity uh, to carve out their own unique space in the blockchain and cryptocurrency sphere. I've talked about it before on this channel that if you are interested in making money in cryptocurrency, not blockchain, but on the cryptocurrency, actual currencies, that you need to diversify. All right? I've talked about that a lot. Um, there is likely to be one winner when it's all said and done. One clear, giant winner. You know, there's a ton of people that believe it's going to be Bitcoin. And I am like 50-50. It's either going to be Bitcoin or anyone else. I, I don't even have a percentage for anyone else because I think it's all equal. Anything could happen. Um, so, other things that are in the white paper um, is that Dash is opening labs up in Hong Kong. So, a little bit more of international flair, which is really good. Um, and uh, lastly, the master nodes are essentially going to be requiring SSDs. And they're creating something called Dash Drive. It's very important you listen to this. Dash Drive is not supposed to be a storage solution, okay? It is not competing against SciCoin or StorageCoin, MadeSafe, all those guys. I wish they chose a different name. Because <laughs> it makes it sound like they're competing against them. 
but really what they're doing is um, they're using a, a new method to basically make their chain more scalable and faster uh, for the long run. So a part of their roadmap is this um, three, there's three phases to it. And on each phase, they plan to exponentially scale uh, the platform. So, um, and this is part of it. This is the first uh, first part of it. And uh, I, I, I did not find it in this white paper. So I will give credit to Crypto for pointing this out because I haven't been able to verify it anywhere. I've looked everywhere, um, but it sounds like um, according to crypto you'll be able to save essentially stake there will be like a dash savings account you'll be able to stake um in a pool together so you, so all of us together everyone watching this channel we could come together and essentially have our own master node that we share if that makes sense so apparently that's in the works or being planned um it wasn't very clear in the uh, white paper it wasn't really mentioned but um, that's something that uh, crypto was sharing uh, about this news and uh, he does have some uh, friends over there uh, pretty good friends with Amanda B so maybe maybe he uh, interviewed her and picked her up, picked up some news that um, is public but just I couldn't find it per se when I was looking for it moving on moving on um, we have a safety alert here. This is my, you know, public service announcement. I do this a lot for you guys, and I think it's healthy. Uh, some of you guys that have been around for a while, you know a scam when you see one. But a lot of people that uh, come to this channel uh, may not be aware, don't know. And this one actually is not a scam. This one is just um, not tasteful. Essentially, Blockfolio um, is using all of your data. It's using everyone's data, and that's not surprising. Um, that's what everyone's doing these days. Your data is, is super valuable. Anytime something is free, um, it's not. Uh, it's they, uh, they're, they're taking from you what is rightfully yours, your data, your personal details, even some privacy. Um, they're taking it and selling it uh, in order to make a profit. Um, nothing is free, guys. There's no free lunch, all right? So... Blockfolio has been taking all of all of your data, all of the portfolio information, and uh, compiling it on the back end. Um, essentially, the ideas are is that they're actually using it to predict movements in the markets um, in order to profit um, and and things like that. They they know way too much about you, everything that you've owned, and where you've sent it, and you know, it's a it's a little sketch sketch, guys. Uh, you know, essentially, it's not decentralized, and that really turns off a lot of people in this space big time. Um, but I'm not surprised. I mean, um, for someone to make an application like that, uh, you know, you would, I would just assume that's what they're doing. Honestly, I honestly would assume that. You know, um, there's a there's another site out there um, called uh, Cryptofolio, and uh, Cryptofolio. You know, the guy that made it, I don't care if he's using all the data. Personally, I don't care. I mean, he may see trends in how much people are stacking or buying. But I don't care. And that's just me. And I know that some people care a lot. But in this particular case, Blockfolio may have too much information on you. And so you need to be very careful. Uh, there's a great article by uh, King's Crown, who's a great Steemit uh, poster. Fantastic. Yeah, he posts some of the best content on Steemit in regards to blockchain and cryptocurrency. Um, if you haven't been on Steemit or used Steemit, go over there and check it out. Um, so if you go to steemit.com uh, backslash at, the at symbol, King's Crown. You can see it right here. I'll go ahead and zoom, on, zoom in here and highlight it for you. Um, King's Crown right here. Um, if you go find his... Uh, um, profile you'll see his posts and and all of them are fantastic i strongly encourage that you follow him as well um he definitely deserves a, a lot of credit for the deep diving of this information here and uh, if you're concerned you need to go read it 
I am not going to deep dive it because I actually don't know very many people that use it, but I do know it's pretty widely adopted and someone listening to me um, out there is definitely using it. You're going to want to go read this. Uh, he's asking you to literally stop. Like, he feels it's such a risk and a concern that you need to stop. And uh, he offers a little bit of a, a tutorial as far as uh, being safe as well. So um, go on over there and check it out if you are using Blockfolio. Uh, moving on, we've got um, testers needed for the Golem uh, user interface. So if you are a, a designer or do 3D rendering and are familiar with the program called Blender, um, they want they want you. And if you just head on over to uh, Golem's blog, you can probably just Google it and find it real quick. Um, they're actually looking for people to go ahead and email them at blender.tests at golem.network. And uh, if you uh, go ahead and email them, they're going to set you up um, with some questions to answer and things like that as far as the interface goes. Um, and this is good. This is good progress on a on a absolutely massive project. You know, uh, it came out a little. Uh, it's actually been a few weeks now that you know you could actually go on there and mess around with some Blender files and check out how Gollum's going to work and what it looks like. Anyhow, they want your feedback, so um, I'd be unbelievably fascinated. I don't know if there's uh, any type of non-disclosure agreement, but if you are somebody that used it. Um, these same questions that they, they have here, please answer them in the comments below. Um, let us know if the interface makes sense to you. Um, were you actually able to successfully add some Blender tasks? Um, did you have any technical issues of any kind? Uh, let you know, is, is, this, is this real? Is this real? Is this thing real to, in, in your opinion? Or is this just some facade um, that's you know buying them time? Is, or is this like an actual real application you feel like it's very user friendly and it works? Is the performance of the user interface acceptable? Is it, is it easy and uh, fun to use? And uh, what are the details of your system configuration? We don't need to know that. But um, go ahead and answer those first four questions that are listed if you um, actually have used this um, I would be super fascinated also if you um, are one of those people and you're on steam it if you leave a comment uh, uh, there I'll definitely give you a full 100% upvote I'm sure many other people will as well uh, for your for, t for your time for contributing good content okay so that is it and uh, I enjoyed bringing you this episode, guys. I am the King of Dew. And uh, please subscribe, thumbs up, and leave a comment below. Head on over to Steam it as well. Uh, we've been having some great conversations over there as well. So um, feel free to join the conversation. I hope you all are doing well and you're staying safe. And I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. And until then, I am the King of Dew. And may the Force be with you.